Disney has some of the cutest animatronics that you can imagine, and we have loved talking about them for as long as we've been doing videos. So today, we are compiling all of the cutest animatronics that we have talked about in hopes that you can leave your suggestions and let us know which animatronics you want us to cover in an upcoming cutest animatronics video. Leave your suggestions below. Stitch, the Enchanted Tiki Room, Stitch presents Aloha Ikomo Mai. You guys know how we feel about Stitch's Great Escape. If you don't and you're curious, take a look at this video. The main mistake that we think made Stitch's Great Escape a huge disaster was the main character. As we said before, even though the Stitch animatronic was amazing, the way Stitch behaved was not. Instead of being the cute, wild, playful, and likable character we grew to love, he was rude and unlikable. But this mistake was fixed at Tokyo Disneyland when the Enchanted Tiki Room, Stitch Presents Aloha I Komo Mai, opened. Tokyo's Tiki Room has changed a few times since it opened. At first, the attraction was just the Japanese version of the original Tiki Room. Then it changed to the Enchanted Tiki Room Get the Fever, a new show that changed the original host and took the new ones to a Las Vegas nightclub, where they needed to wake up the sleeping tiki gods by singing. The last time it changed was in 2008, when the Enchanted Tiki Room, Stitch Presents Aloha I Komo Mai, came to life. This new show brought new hosts to the Tiki Room, who welcomed the audience and began the show by singing Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride. As soon as this song ends, the lights go out, and the chaos begins. There are drawings and messages written all over the place. The birds suspect that Big Kahuna, the leader of the Enchanted Tiki, was responsible for this, and they continue with the next song, but they are interrupted. Manu, one of the hosts, decides to ask the girls about Big Kahuna. But when they come down, we see that they are wearing blue plastic ears. They don't know where they came from, but they say that a blue creature put the ears on them. Just then, blue paint falls on the birds, and they leave scared. The lights go out, and lightning strikes, and Stitch comes out of the fountain. He pretends to be Big Kahuna at first, but then decided to reveal that he is obviously Stitch, and that he kept interrupting the show because he wanted to be a part of it. The birds agree to let him join the show, only if he behaves. Stitch sings and plays his ukulele. He says he is happy and that everyone is part of his ohana. The show is fun and beautiful, and the Stitch animatronic is so cute. He is the Stitch we all know and love, playful and mischievous, but lovable and sweet. Everything that was missing from Stitch's Great Escape. I'm finally finished. If you want to join my club, become a member on my YouTube memberships for as little as 99 cents. There, you can access behind the scenes content, videos showing how I work, as well as exclusive videos just for members. Chef Remy, Epcot. Just like Anton Ego said, not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. This was the case of Remy, one of the best chefs in the world. He was so great that it led him to become head chef and host of Les Chefs de France in Epcot's World Showcase. This was part of the Disney Living Characters Initiative, a really ambitious initiative that brought animatronics like Lucky the Dinosaur and the Muppet Mobile Lab that interacted with guests. So in 2009, Disney decided to open a new experience called Bon Appetit from Chef Remy. During this experience, guests could enjoy Remy's presence six days a week with four presentations a day. A maitre d' greeted diners with a rolling gourmet food cart. Dramatically lifting the lid from a silver dome cheese platter, they revealed the guest of honor, a six inch tall rat with silky soft fur, pink paws, and a traditional chef hat. Chef Remy then came to life entertaining diners with sprightly movements and lively banter. Winding their way through the restaurant, Remy and his maitre d' pal made stops at each table. In addition to his hijinks, Chef Remy might even be able to bust a move to the beat of different tunes, from the soft sway of a French love song to the hot sounds of hip-hop. The 40-minute experience provided guests with an up-close encounter with the Ratatouille star as he laughed, sniffled, and even flirted with his new friends. At the time of its creation, Remy was the smallest animatronic Disney had ever built, and he had done his debut at Walt Disney Studios Park in Disneyland Paris Resort. Unfortunately, this experience is no longer available, and his last presentation was on October 24th, 2013. This animatronic is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful ever created. Albert, Mystic Manor. Mystic Manor 
Mystic Manor opened on May 17, 2013 at Hong Kong Disneyland. The ride tells the story of Henry Mystic and his monkey friend Albert. Albert is such a cute animatronic. He is mischievous, curious, and energetic, and his curiosity has led us to an amazing adventure. Lord Mystic has acquired an enchanted music box that is said to bring any inanimate object to life. Before we enter the ride, we can see Albert where he tells us the legend of the music box. Then we go into the acquisitions and cataloging room where Lord Mystic comes in in the form of an animatronic. He mentions the music box and tells us he is looking for Albert and then leaves. And just after he goes, Albert comes in. Obviously, Albert can't control his curiosity and unlocks the box. Magic Dust escapes the box and floats into the air, bringing the artifacts to life. This ride is amazing, and we can see lots of artifacts moving and changing in each of the rooms. Albert can also be found in many different scenes, first being amazed by the mess he caused, and then trying to escape from the danger. We see him in the music room, watching in fascination all the instruments that came to life, in the solarium room, where he's toying with some Venus flytraps, in the arms and armor room, where he is escaping from a samurai armor that's been trying to hack his head off, in the hall of tribal arts, where three tiki statues aim and throw arrows and darts at him. He then appeared in the final scene, but not as an animatronic. In the end, we see him in the acquisitions and cataloging room again, where he closes a box and turns everything back to normal. Lord Mystic appears again, happy to find Albert, and asks him if he touched the box. Of course, Albert denies, and our adventure is over. Albert is so cute, even if he caused this mess. The Fathiers, The Last Jedi The Last Jedi is, without a doubt, one of the most controversial Star Wars movies ever made. But not even the biggest haters can deny the amazing job the team made with the movie's creatures. The Last Jedi brought back and created many loved and impressive creatures to the world of Star Wars. An example of these creatures is the Fathiers. These creatures were brought to life thanks to the joint work of Neil Scanlon's Creature Shop and the visual effects team of Ben Morris. Many people have described the Fathiers as space horses, but there were also many other characteristics taken from other animals, like greyhounds and cheetahs. Ryan Johnson always pictured a type of horse animal with the qualities of a lion, so the team worked with the designs to create this perfect mix. They came up with the Fathiers, an 18 feet tall and long creature. A practical version of the Fathier was made, which can be seen in the film the first time we meet one of the creatures in its stall on Canto Bight. This animatronic was built and carefully guarded so that Kelly Marie Tran did not see it until the day of filming. The team hid the animatronic inside the stable and called Kelly Marie into it. Then they moved the head of the animatronic forward and captured the moment and the reaction of Tran. Her reaction was so natural that even a tear escaped from the actress. The animatronic is handled from behind on a special platform hidden in the dark. There are also special controls for the mouth, the eyes, the eye blinks, the ears, the little tweaks in the nose, the jaw, and the flaring of the cheeks. The foam latex skin that covers the mechanics was covered in thousands of hairs, punched in by hand, one by one. This animatronic also helped the VFX team to create the fathiers that we see running around the casino, escaping. We love these creatures and definitely think they are one of the cutest creatures in the Star Wars universe. Crystal Fox, The Last Jedi The Fathiers are not the only amazing creatures to come out of The Last Jedi. Since the trailer for the movie came out, these creatures stood out as impressive and extremely cute. The Crystal Fox, or Vulptex, are some fox-like creatures that live in Crate. Vulptex are specifically adapted to its environment by feeding off Crate's mineral surface. This diet has caused the creature's fur to become crystalline, like the planet itself. The creatures were designed by Aaron McBride, and the name, Vulptex, came from Lucasfilm story group member Pablo Hidalgo, who galacticized Vulpes, the Latin word for fox. To design these creatures, Neil Scanlon's team took inspiration from crystal glass chandeliers and, of course, many different species of foxes, like the arctic fox and the red fox. The best part about this whole process was that they used a dog for inspiration. They made a suit covered in clear drinking straws and put it on the dog to get an idea for the movement of the crystal fur. From there, the creature shop used that information to build animatronic puppets with more than 2,500 crystals that could perform in scenes with live actors. While separate static models were constructed to be digitally scanned for animators, these creatures are not only part of the fauna of Crate, but also have a very important role in the movie. And they are, without a doubt, some of the cutest and most elegant creatures in the whole galaxy. Rosita, Tropical Hideaway we love the Enchanted Tiki Room. This attraction is one of the most classic Disney attractions, and we must not forget that thanks to this attraction, animatronics were developed. Audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. 
Audio for sound. See, si, and electronically animated by sound. It opened back in 1963, and it instantly became a hit. Each of the show's numbers is incredible, but one of the most iconic parts of it is when the bird mobile comes down from the roof, showcasing the six showgirl cockatoos, Colette, Suzette, Mimi, Gigi, Fifi, and Josephine. Just after Pierre presents them, we hear Jose wondering whatever happened to Rosita. There were many rumors through the years about what happened to Rosita. Some said she was fired or that she flew away. Other people said that she found a new home at another attraction or store. But after all those rumors, Rosita came back. Last year, the Tropical Hideaway opened in Adventureland at Disneyland, where Aladdin's Oasis used to be. The Tropical Hideaway is a new quick service location, featuring exotic eats and a place to rest for weary world travelers and park guests alike. And it not only brought new delicious Dole Whip flavors, but it also brought Rosita. After years of performing with the Birdmobile chorus of Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, Rosita spread her wings and took flight toward a solo career. We can now find her on the river's edge. She is such a cute animatronic. She sits looking at the Jungle Cruise River, greeting guests and sharing the cutest jokes and puns that would make any Jungle Cruise skipper proud. Hopefully, her return made Jose happy. Skippy Alien Encounter Okay, okay, Alien Encounter. We know we've talked about it a thousand times, but it was such an amazing attraction. And how could we leave this extremely cute creature off the list? Seriously, it is one of the cutest creatures Disney has come up with ever. Skippy appeared during the attraction's pre-show, where we met an excess robot known as Simulated Intelligence Robotics, or SIR for short. He was supposed to demonstrate how easy and completely painless the teleportation technology was, and for this he would use, you guessed it, Skippy. Skippy was supposed to be teleported from one side of the room to the other, but as you may know, something goes terribly wrong. Skippy appears on the other side of the room alright, but he is burnt to a crisp, wailing and in pain. We have talked endlessly about this before, but we've never mentioned how this cool and equally sad effect was achieved. Because Skippy was a pretty complex animatronic, this couldn't be achieved by flattening it or using a simple mirror effect. What Imagineers did was lowering the animatronic so it would disappear. The way the tubes were displayed made it appear to be elevated. The animatronic went down far enough to hide the antenna. Angled mirrors were used similar to the effect for the butterfly in Imagination. Even during the Stitch era, the mirrors had to carefully reflect the wall so that no matter where you stood in the pre-show, it appears to be entirely open for the other side. Sadly, when this attraction, and then Stitch's Great Escape, closed, Skippy, along with the other animatronics, was not properly stored. They were destroyed and abandoned for a while. It would be a dream come true if we could have Skippy back. Baby Yoda, The Mandalorian Star Wars fans have been divided for the last couple of years, but one thing we can all agree on is that The Mandalorian is a fantastic show. It dethroned Stranger Things as a top streaming show in the US, and it is now the most in-demand series debut in the world this year. Not only does this series have an incredible story, amazing sets, and astounding production, but it also has amazing characters. One of these characters has stood out among the rest. We're of course talking about the child, or Baby Yoda as it's been nicknamed. There's a little bit of a spoiler coming up, so if you haven't watched The Mandalorian, you've been warned. Baby Yoda was present for the first time at the end of Episode 1. There's little to no information about the child. We only know that it is 50 years old and that the Empire, or what remains of the Empire, is looking for it. The character was designed by Christian Alsman. To be able to bring it to life, a mix of puppetry, animatronics, and CGI is used. The puppet is operated by two technicians. One moves the eyes and the mouth, and the other is in charge of the facial expressions. While the series was being created, John Favreau and executive producer Dave Filoni were unsure if a puppet would achieve the level of believability they were aiming for. So they filmed the scenes again without the puppet so that industrial light and magic artists could recreate the child in CGI in case the animatronic puppet did not work as they hoped. When shooting a scene with actor Werner Herzog, who plays a mysterious man with ties to the remnants of the Empire, the team removed the puppet and proceeded to shoot again without it. Herzog asked what they were doing, and when the team explained the situation, Herzog jokingly said that they were cowards and that they should commit to using the puppet. So, they decided to commit, and the result is amazing. This puppet animatronic is amazing and so cute. Now it's 2024, and Grogu's story has been developed even further. And we keep loving this character more and more. Now that a Mandalorian film was announced, we wonder if Grogu will be a part of it, and hopefully, they will use an animatronic again. There's also a Grog animatronic at Galaxy's Edge. You can see him and Mando roaming around the land and be lucky enough to meet them and take a picture. DJ Rex, Oga's Cantina. When the original Star Tours was changed, fans were sad to see one of their favorite Star Tours characters gone, RX-24. 
disappeared and was only seen as an easter egg in the Star Tours The Adventure Continues queue, where he is being packaged for transport with a sticker that shows he is defective. He sometimes malfunctions and uses dialogue from the previous version of Star Tours. Let's take a look at Rex's backstory. Rex is an RX series pilot droid manufactured by Rubens Robotic Systems. He was initially a pilot for the Rebels and manned a Star Speeder 2000 used to steal weapons and supplies from the Galactic Empire. Though these series of droids were built with the information of only assisting with flight, Rex took charge on most occasions and only took the passenger seat when ordered to. Nobody knows why or how RX-24 made a career change. He was sent to work as a pilot for a tourism agency. However, Rex was shipped to Star Tours marked as defective. Intended to be sent back to the factory, he sat outside his crate until after the Battle of Endor, when he was repaired in-house. Set to captain the brand new Star Speeder 3000 on its maiden voyage to Endor, Rex climbed aboard and promised passengers a smooth flight. In perhaps the biggest PR disaster in Star Tours history, many things went wrong. A near crash before exiting the spaceport, a miscalculation with light speed, and a stint fighting alongside the New Republic spelled doom for the tourism company. Within months of the mishap, Star Tours filed for bankruptcy and buckled. After losing his job, Rex crash landed on Batuu, where he was picked up by a droid depot worker named Mubo, and reprogrammed into a DJ. He was traded to a local cantina owner, Ogagara, to settle a previous debt. He can now be found at Oga's Cantina in the Black Spire Outpost. The original Rex was voiced by Paul Rubens, who reprised a role in Rebels and also came back to voice DJ Rex in Galaxy's Edge. DJ Rex's mixes and phrases make him an awesome DJ, one of the cutest animatronics in Batu. Vilu's Cosmo and Rocket, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout is an amazing ride, and even though we miss the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, we're so happy to have this great ride. The ride has awesome animatronics, and they're so cute. As soon as we enter the building and before entering the pre-show, we take a look at Tivan's collection. We can find many of the collector's treasures, some living, dead, and inanimate objects that he has on display for tourists. Among these objects, we can find Cosmo, who was a test dog for the Russian space program before being captured by the collector for his museum. Thankfully, at the end of the ride, he can be seen escaping his cell with the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy. We can also find some Vilus that were captured by the Collector recently. These bird-like specimens are especially cool because they are interactive. They can be quite responsive, friendly, and outgoing, as they respond to noises and movement around them. But they can also become shy and introverted. There are actually a ton of Metronics, which are equipped with sensors and cameras that allow them to react in a different and autonomous way to each guest. Then we enter the pre-show where we are taken to the Collector's private office. Here he plans to tell us the rules and let us know what we're supposed to be seeing when we enter the ride, but he is interrupted. We see a tail coming out of the vent, and suddenly, Rocket appears. He is an amazing animatronic with very lifelike movements and expressions. He tells us about the mission and asks us to help, and then he's gone, but not before taking Quill's Walkman first. You wouldn't expect to find such cute animatronics at the Collector's Museum, but we're so happy that they're there. Three When Walt started developing animatronics, one of his dreams was having an attraction inside a theater where many Disney characters would not only put on a show, but would be sitting in the boxes with the guests, heckling. This dream came true when Imagineers started planning attractions for Walt Disney World's 1971 opening. Mickey Mouse Review was one of Magic Kingdom's opening day attractions. This attraction featured lots of different Disney characters singing and dancing and putting on a fantastic show. The show had 73 different Disney characters and 81 animatronics, so you can imagine that this attraction was full of cute animatronics. It was also the only attraction where we could find an animatronic Mickey Mouse. The show had many numbers that included amazing Disney character animatronics. There was the orchestra scene that had 23 different Disney characters, a Three Little Pigs scene, a Snow White scene, an Alice in Wonderland scene, a Cinderella scene, and many more. One of these scenes was the Three Caballeros scene. During this number, a flying carpet rose from the left of the orchestra. On this carpet, we could find the Three Caballeros, Donald, Panchito, and Jose Carioca singing the Three Caballeros theme in a blaze of music and color. The coolest part about this scene is that each of the Caballeros appeared and disappeared many times across the stage while singing their song. Just before the song ended, they appeared together again on the carpet and then disappeared. The show lasted almost 10 minutes. It was full of cute animatronics, and it was really cool. But as time passed, fewer people were visiting it. In fact, 
the attraction was downgraded from an E to a D ticket attraction, which was pretty rare. Then, when the Oriental Land Company began touring Disneyland and Disney World and choosing the attractions they wanted to have in the new Tokyo Disneyland Park, the Mickey Mouse Review was on top of their list. And it was a lot less expensive to ship the original attraction overseas instead of recreating it. So the attraction closed on September 14, 1980 and reopened in Tokyo Disneyland on April 15, 1983. The attraction was opened for another 26 years until it sadly closed on May 25, 2006 to be replaced by Mickey's Philhar Magic. The animatronics were retired. We know that Mickey's animatronic is safe and sound in the Walt Disney Archives. It was even on display in the 2011 D23 Expo, Treasures of the Walt Disney Archives. And we also know where the three caballeros are currently. The three caballeros have been beloved characters since the movie came out in 1944. This movie is very cute and has some of the most lovable characters. The film took Donald with his friends Panchito Pistolas and Jose Carioca through Mexico and Brazil. And while Panchito is the only Mexican caballero, these characters were an amazing fit to create the first IP attraction in the World Showcase at Epcot. So in 2007, Grand Fiesta Tour starring the three caballeros replaced El Rio del Tiempo in the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot. The ride takes us to Mexico, where the three caballeros are going to be performing a concert. But we find out that Donald has run off, so we need to help Jose and Panchito look for him so they can find him in time for the concert. So during the ride, we see Donald touring Mexico and Jose and Panchito on a magic serape looking for him. At the end of the ride, the boat takes us to Mexico City, where we can see fireworks off overhead and the three caballeros finally performing their concert. Since the ride's opening in 2007 until 2015, the Three Caballeros concert was shown on screen. But then, on December 4, 2015, Disney quietly replaced this screen with the Three Caballeros animatronics, recycled from the Mickey Mouse Review attraction. We love these cute birds, and we're so happy that they can still be seen. Olaf. Anna? Elsa? Sven? Samantha? <laughs> I don't even know it's Samantha! <laughs> Let's be honest, Olaf has been one of Disney fans' favorite characters since Frozen came out back in 2013. And how could he not be if he's a wonderful mix between Josh Gad's voice, an incredibly cute design, and the creativity used for developing the character's charisma and personality? He is not only hilarious, but he is a smart, empathetic, and cute character that makes such a great synergy with every other character in the movie. That's why when Disney was planning on reimagining Epcot's Maelstrom into Frozen Ever After, Imagineers knew that Olaf had to be a huge part of the ride. So in June 2016, Frozen Ever After opened its doors. This new ride uses a combination of physical sets, audio animatronics, and projections to bring the hit movie to life in a new and exciting way. And one of the cutest and most impressive animatronics of this ride is Olaf. Imagineers created this animatronic so perfectly that its fluid movements make it hard to tell it apart from animation. This figure also has the help of projection technology for its eyes. And even though we're not big fans of projection on animatronics, it does not take away from the awesome job Imagineers made on this cute character. Olaf sings, moves, and even walks across the stage, all of this thanks to a special rig that was adapted for the animatronic. In this scene, Olaf sings a modified version of Do You Want to Build a Snowman? He appears again as soon as we enter Elsa's palace. But this is not the first time an Olaf animatronic has appeared at a Disney park. Back in 2013, Disneyland opened a new meet and greet experience in Fantasyland, where guests could meet Anna and Elsa. This experience was obviously very popular, and it had a wait time of up to 120 minutes. So Imagineers created an animatronic Olaf that waited outside with guests. This temporary experience only lasted about a year, and sadly, this animatronic was never seen again. Olaf is so cute, and we're glad we get to see him in animatronic form. Oddball and the 101 Dalmatians Animals 101 Dalmatians is a huge classic and such a cute movie. People all over seem to love it. And so, Disney decided to create a live-action remake of it. The film sadly did not have great reception with critics and was very polemic because many irresponsible people watched the movie, bought Dalmatian puppies right after, and then when they grew tired, abandoned them. But in spite of these dilemmas, we can't deny the huge work that everybody who worked on the project did. 
Glenn Close as Cruella was amazing and terrifying at the same time. But the best part of this remake was able to be done because of the huge talent of Industrial Light and Magic and Jim Henson's Creature Shop, who created effects and animatronics for the film. John Hughes and Stephen Herrick's intention was to use real animals in the making of 101 Dalmatians, and they did. However, there are some shots and scenes which would not have been possible without the wizardry of these studios. Jim Henson's Creature Shop already had lots of experience on projects of this type, having worked and won many awards for projects like Babe. In particular, the Creature Shop was commissioned to produce a range of young and newborn animatronic puppies. Other animatronic creations include the back end of a horse, used to catapult Cruella through a barn door, an Airedale dog, a dead tiger, and a raccoon and pig. Industrial Light and Magic added puppies to scenes to give the illusion of 99 puppies fleeing from Horace and Jasper, as well as digitally renovating the DeVille mansion and multiplying Pongo and Purdy's puppies to give the illusion of 1,000 puppies. To promote the movie, Disney recreated the creature shop inside of the now-retired backstage pass attraction at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and they brought these animatronics so guests could see them and interact with them. Then, in 2000, the film's sequel, 102 Dalmatians, came out. This time, Neil Scanlon was in charge of creating the animatronics. If this name sounds familiar to you, it might be because we have talked about him before. He was responsible for creating the Crystal Foxes and the Fathiers, two of our cutest animatronics from part one. For this sequel, there were many high-tech animatronics created. We have talked about how there are animatronics that are controlled remotely by puppeteers. This time, they used only one console that could be configured to handle different animatronics. Among the many animatronics that were created for this film, we can find two red macaws that were moved with the console and a third one that was created with a special rig that allowed it to walk. The newborn puppies were so realistic, it was hard to tell them apart from real puppies. In this sequel, we have a new star. Oddball is a cute puppy that never developed spots. This new puppy had to be recreated as an animatronic and was used during production within group puppy sequences. It was beautifully and realistically detailed, right down to the individual claws on each paw. The front paws feature two slightly protruding metal rods, and there are also screw holes to the plastic foot plates of the rear paws. Originally, the animatronics would have given movement to the neck and possibly slight movement within the body. There were several oddball animatronics made, and one of these was auctioned by iCollector.com. It was sold for 650 pounds, which is a steal considering the technology and developing that went with creating it. We love these movies, even if they're not perfect. The great work behind them should really be appreciated. Pascal Animatronic on June 14, 2018, the Oriental Land Company Limited announced that an agreement had been reached with the Walt Disney Company on plans for developing a new themed port at Tokyo Disney Sea, which will also include a new Disney hotel. The expansion at Tokyo Disney Sea will create an eighth themed port that is inspired by a magical spring leading to a world of Disney fantasy. This area will be called Fantasy Springs and will be comprised of three distinct areas recreating the fantastic worlds from Frozen, Tangled, and Peter Pan. Guests will get to visit Anna and Elsa's Kingdom of Arendelle, the forest and tower where Rapunzel lives, and the home of Peter Pan, the Lost Boys, and Tinkerbell in Neverland. This area will have four new attractions, three restaurants, one shop, and of course, the new hotel. And one of these attractions will be what we've waited for since 2010, an attraction that follows Rapunzel to the Lantern Festival. In the attraction, guests will board gondolas for a romantic boat tour of Rapunzel's best day ever as she journeys with Flynn to the Lantern Festival. Countless flickering lanterns illuminate the attraction's climactic scene while Rapunzel and Flynn sing an iconic song from the film, building to an unforgettable finale. This ride sounds fantastic, and we can't wait until it opens in 2022. We expect that this ride will be filled with awesome animatronics and some of the cutest, too. Back in September, Walt Disney Imagineering released a short video on their YouTube channel resuming one of the lessons from their online course, Imagineering in a Box. Imagineering in a Box is a free online educational curriculum available through Khan Academy, where Disney Imagineers share their expertise from hundreds of career disciplines around the world. We'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. But back to the video. They released a lesson talking about character development, and in this video they showed us a glimpse of the latest all-electronic animatronic figure, Pascal. Pascal is entirely electrically powered instead of hydraulic or pneumatic based, like most animatronics used at the parks. 
This allows for more realistic fluid movements and micro movements. It has not been confirmed that he will be used for the Tangled attraction, and some people speculate that he might be used for meet and greets, but we doubt it. Either case, he is so cute, and we can't wait to see him in action. So many things happened that made the opening of Fantasy Springs be delayed. Thankfully, it has been announced that it will open on June 6 of this year. Chengdu. Tokyo Disney Sea is considered one of the best Disney parks, if not the best Disney park in the world. It's got a fantastic theming and equally impressive rides. One of these rides is Sinbad's Storybook Voyage. The dark ride opened as Sinbad's Seven Voyages on September 4, 2001. The original version was not that popular among guests because it had a very dark tone. It was scary and unfriendly and people didn't like it. So in 2006, the ride closed so it could be reimagined. The new version opened on March 29, 2007, and it became an instant classic. For this new version, Imagineers restaged most scenes, altered many of the animatronic figures, and gave the ride's story more focus. They added the now-famous Compass of Your Heart song, written by none other than Alan Menken. But more importantly, they added Chandu. Chandu is Sinbad's cute sidekick. When the ride was changed, Sinbad's human crew was recast as pirates or other figures. So Sinbad needed a sidekick, and Chandu was the perfect one. Chandu became Sinbad's only recurring companion, and the two voyage out on adventures and help people along the way. Chandu can be seen in almost every scene during this ride. At the start of the ride, we find ourselves entering Sinbad's home village in Baghdad, where the people of the village are wishing Sinbad and Chandu a safe journey. Here we can see Chandu on Sinbad's boat with a map in his mouth. We pass through the tunnel and get to a rainstorm where we can see Sinbad's broken ship and two mermaids who saved Sinbad and Chandu. They get another boat and we see Chandu on top of the sail as Sinbad thanks the mermaids for saving them. Next, on Rock Island, Sinbad needs to stop pirates who are attacking the magical rock birds. During this scene, we see Chandu pouncing on one of the pirates' heads. Sinbad and Chandu succeed and take one of the bird's magical feathers to the cave of the giant, where they find the giant locked inside a cell. During the scene, Chandu is seen tying up another pirate with a pearl necklace. Sinbad uses the feather to unlock the cell and free the giant who thanks Sinbad for freeing him by gifting him his gold. In this scene, we don't see Chandu, just a peek of his tail hiding in the treasure chest with a tiger engraved on it. Sinbad continues with his adventures and arrives in the Sultan's palace, where the Sultan asks him to save a village that has been overtaken by monkeys. Here, Chandu appears standing on a drum carried by a group of citizens. When they reach the monkey village, Chandu decides to stay on the boat, and only peeks behind a bunch of bananas. On their way back to the village, Sinbad and Chandu find a giant whale who speeds up their journey. In this scene, we can see Chandu playing on the whale's water spout. They arrive safely back home and share everything they found during the voyage with the people in the village. In the end, Chandu is seen sleeping on top of a rope as Sinbad thanks the guests for joining him on his voyage. We can all agree that Chandu is one of the cutest sidekicks in any Disney park ride and, of course, one of the cutest animatronics. And thankfully, there is a lot of Chandu merch at Tokyo Disney Sea, and even one of Tokyo Disney Sea's most popular snacks sold at the Sultan's Oasis snack stand. Babu Frick. The Skywalker saga sadly came to an end this past December, ending more than 40 years of fantastic adventures and stories. For many of us, this movie was a wonderful way to pay tribute to the legacy of one of our favorite sagas. And one of the ways this trilogy did that was by bringing back practical effects and animatronics to tell the story. In Rise of Skywalker, many new characters were introduced, but without a doubt, the one that stole fans' hearts everywhere was Babu Frick. <coughs> Babu Frick is an Anzellan droid smith who works among the spice runners of Kijimi. It's an accomplished hacker and can reprogram or modify virtually any droid, regardless of any security measures protecting its systems. He was first revealed during the 2019 Force Friday merchandise reveal, but people really fell in love with him after watching the film. Babu Frick is an animatronic created, again by the Star Wars animatronic master, Neil Scanlan. This team managed to create a new, cute, and endearing character that joined the ranks of cuteness, along with R2-D2, the Ewoks, Porgs, and most recently, Baby Yoda of the Child, who we mentioned in part one of this video. To create this character, the team sculpted and created a tiny puppet animatronic that looked interesting and weird at the same time. 
the cutest part of this character not only comes from his interesting aspect, but also with his personality. Babu Frick is voiced by Shirley Henderson, an actress famously known for playing Moaning Myrtle in the Harry Potter movies. The joint work of the Scanlan and Henderson team makes Babu Frick an unforgettable character, and successively one of the cutest in the history of cinema and animatronics. Daisy Duck Burst into a world where mouse rules apply. Goofy, pay attention! Now open at Walt Disney World Resort. On May 1st, 1989, Disney opened MGM Studios. This new park had a tram tour that would take guests past four working sound stages, an animation building, back lot sets, post-production facilities, and a new ambitious ride. The Great Movie Ride was originally planned as a new pavilion for Epcot called Great Moments at the Movies. But instead of doing this, Michael Eisner decided to make it a full theme park that would have this ride as its main attraction. This dark ride took guests through many scenes of iconic Hollywood movies, where they could become part of musicals like Mary Poppins, gangster films like Public Enemy, westerns like A Fistful of Dollars, sci-fi adventure and drama films like Alien, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Casablanca, and fantasy films like Fantasia and The Wizard of Oz. This ride had the first A100 animatronic in Disney parks and was loved by guests everywhere. But of course, times change and the park needed a new renovation, and one of the things that got renovated was the Great Movie Ride. On July 15, 2017, Disney announced at D23 that the attraction would close to be replaced by Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. We are thrilled to announce that we are creating our first ever ride-through attraction built entirely around Mickey Mouse. This new attraction was described as a zany, out-of-control adventure with unpredictable twists and turns, dazzling visual effects, and mind-blowing transformations that would happen during the scenes. Less than a month after the announcement, the great movie ride closed forever, and work began immediately on the new attraction. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway finally opened on March 4, 2020. This new attraction takes guests inside a Mickey and Minnie cartoon and is the first Disney ride-through attraction entirely based around Mickey and Minnie. The ride had lots of cute characters, of course. We can see the Fab Five plus other members of the game. And many of these characters appear as animatronics. All through the ride, we see Mickey and Minnie as cute animatronics, sometimes joined by Pluto, too. But the cutest of all animatronics that we can find in this ride is Daisy. During the ride, the trackless cars take guests into a dance studio where they can meet Daisy. Daisy begins her class by asking the trackless cars to get in position and then counting the steps so they can learn how to waltz. After a while, the cars stop waltzing and Daisy announces a congo, and the cars congo out the studio. This is arguably the best animatronic in this ride. She is small and very cute and has limited but realistic moves. We can't help but wish that there were more animatronics like these in the ride. Now Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway has also opened at Disneyland, and it quickly became one of our favorite rides. Luxo Jr. Hollywood Studios in California Adventure We can't think of Pixar without thinking of Luxo Jr. And that is because Luxo is not only Pixar's mascot, but it also put Pixar on the map as a pioneer of 3D animation. Pixar is a leader in the creation of tools that allow people to understand data through the technology of visualization. Back in 1986, John Lasseter created Luxo Jr., drawing inspiration from a Luxo lamp on his drawing table. He did this to create a graphic rendering model and experiment with it, using it for motion studies where he used the main principles of animation as well as simulations of light and shadows. At first, Luxo Jr. was just used for this. But then Belgian animator Raoul Cervais convinced Lasseter to create a whole plot and story for the character. So, the short Luxo Jr. was created and presented at SIGGRAPH, an annual computer technology exhibition attended by thousands of industry professionals. The film received critical acclaim for its photorealistic style and emotional impact, and Pixar, as well as Luxo Jr., became legends. Now, Pixar and Disney have had a long history, since the creation of Toy Story back in 1995 to Disney buying the company in 2006, so it was natural that Disney wanted to have Luxo Jr. at the parks. So in 2009, and as part of the Living Characters Initiative, which you can know more about if you click here, Disney brought Luxo Jr. to life as an animatronic. 
This animatronic could be found near Toy Story Mania at Disney's Hollywood Studios. This cute new animatronic was part of a mini show that took place every 15 minutes, where Luxo Jr. would come out, interact with guests, and dance to many Pixar songs. That same year, Disney started creating and selling Luxo Jr. merchandise. But this resulted in a lawsuit by Luxo ASA, the Norwegian company that manufactures Luxo lamps, who claimed that Disney violated its trademarks by selling promotional lamps branded as the Luxo Jr. character. Disney reached a settlement with Luxo ASA and agreed not to sell Luxo Jr. lamps, while Luxo ASA did not object to artist renditions of the lamp and allowed Pixar to keep using Luxo Jr. as a character. And curiously, after this settlement, the Luxo Jr. animatronic was retired from Hollywood Studios. Many people say that this was part of the deal, while others say it was because of technical difficulties. Whatever the case, the animatronic was removed. Luckily, Luxo Jr. did come back to the parks. Nowadays, he can be found at the entrance of Pixar Pier. This new animatronic is not as complex as the one that appeared at Hollywood Studios, but it is really cute. Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse Review We've talked a lot about this attraction, but it's one of our favorite retired attractions and one that we would love to see come back. Back when Walt Disney started thinking of ways to use animatronics for attractions in the parks, he came up with the idea of an attraction that would be a theater where Disney characters would put on a show and even sit in the boxes with guests. Sadly, he never saw this become a reality, but his dream came true when Walt Disney World opened in 1971. Mickey Mouse Review was one of the Magic Kingdom's opening day attractions. In this attraction, many Disney characters sang, danced, and put on a fantastic show inside a theater. The show had 73 different characters and 81 animatronics, because some characters appeared more than once during the show. The show was full of cute animatronics everywhere. But the cutest animatronic in this show was without a doubt Mickey Mouse. And not only was he the cutest, but it was the only Mickey Mouse animatronic that existed in any Disney attraction until now. This show started with an 8 minute movie that showed Mickey's career through the years and the use of sound in his cartoons and films. Next, guests entered the theater where the show would take place. The show started when Mickey appeared on a pedestal that rose from the floor. An orchestra of 23 characters followed. We could find characters like Minnie, Goofy, Daisy, and Pluto. Many more from older Disney movies like Dumbo, Timothy Mouse, The Mad Hatter, The March Hare, Gus Gus, and Jack. And some from the recent film at the time like Baloo, Ka, King Louie, Winnie, Piglet, and Rabbit. The orchestra played a melody of familiar Disney songs like Hi Ho, Whistle While You Work, and When You Wish Upon a Star. After the orchestra number, many of the Disney classic characters appeared in their own scenes, singing and dancing to their signature song. There were the Three Little Pigs, Snow White with the Forest Animals, and the Seven Dwarfs, Alice surrounded by the flowers singing All in the Golden Afternoon, the Three Caballeros, which we talked about in our Cutest Animatronics Part 2 video, and the Fairy Godmother in Cinderella. After this last scene, Br'er Fox, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Rabbit appeared singing their theme song, and soon after the whole cast appeared and sang together. When they finished, the entire stage went dark except for Mickey. The Mickey Mouse alma mater started playing, and then Mickey announced the show was over. This show was amazing and lasted over 9 minutes, but as time passed, fewer and fewer people were visiting it. Then, in September of 1980, the attraction closed. But it was not the end of it. The attraction was shipped overseas and installed in a new Tokyo Disneyland park in 1983. Here the attraction was opened for another 26 years until it sadly closed on May 25, 2006, to be replaced by Mickey's Philharmonic. Some animatronics were put away, others were recycled for other attractions, and we can happily report that Mickey's animatronic is safe and sound in the Walt Disney archives. It was even on display in the 2011 D23 Expo Treasures of Walt Disney's archives. Hopefully, one day Disney will bring back this attraction, but it is unlikely that this will happen. BB-8 Rise of the Resistance When Star Wars The Force Awakens dropped for the first time, it was a worldwide phenomenon. The whole world was excited to see what happened next in one of the most famous sagas of all time. And one of the things that people were most excited about was the new characters. These new characters included a new super cute droid that even though only appeared a total of 3 seconds in the trailer, made everyone fall in love. People were excited to see more of this droid, and what made everyone more anxious to see it was that it was announced that BB-8 would not be a CGI character. One of J.J. Abrams' top priority when he started working on Star Wars was to go back to original sets and practical effects, 
and BB-8 would be no exception. So, he joined forces with Neil Scanlan to create animatronics that would appear in The Force Awakens. Creating BB-8 was a challenge. J.J. Abrams had created the concept of this droid on a napkin and he wanted this design to work. So a special animatronic that moves on something of a pivot was created. This animatronic has an axle through the middle and rocks from side to side, meaning he has to turn to roll in a new direction rather than just shift his momentum. The puppet version of the droid has a two-handed brace for control, one for the motion of the lower body, and one for the orientation of the free-floating head. On some other occasions, other robotic BB-8s were used, but rarely the one with completely autonomous movement. When BB-8 was moving at higher speed, the animatronic was guided by an attached motor unit that controlled its direction, which was digitally removed from shots in post-production. In total, seven different BB-8s were used in the filming of The Force Awakens each one varying levels of puppeteer control. But the most impressive BB-8 animatronic was the one that was created for the red carpet premiere of The Force Awakens. This animatronic was a fully functioning, free-rolling robot that did the press tour without human assistance. For this to work, the team used text similar to what the Sparrow robots use. This animatronic uses a gyroscope to determine which way is down and two wheels to move the spear from inside. When Rise of the Resistance opened at both Hollywood Studios and Disneyland, we were all happy to see that Imagineers had added not one, but two BB-8 animatronics to the ride. First, in the Q pre-show, guests find a super cute BB-8 who is waiting for a transmission from Rey, who then travels and explains that a group of resistant agents, including Finn, have boarded a Star Destroyer that is en route to the Batuu system. Believing the base to be no longer safe, Rey explains that guests will be boarding transports to rendezvous with Leia Organa and Bakara. Next, guests go out in order to board this transport, and BB-8 appears again, this time on Pole X-Wing. BB-8 is, without a doubt, the cutest droid in the galaxy. Figment, Imagination Pavilion So, as we said before, Epcot was a great opportunity for Disney to create new characters and rides that didn't rely on previously created Disney characters. So, while creating the park, Imagineers needed these new characters for the park's new pavilion. One of these pavilions was the Imagination Pavilion. The Imagination Pavilion's signature ride was Journey into Imagination, and the ride had two main characters. These characters were the musical Dreamfinder, a kindly, dreamy inventor that created Figment, a cute purple dragon from sparks and ideas he collected with his flying machine. Journey into Imagination was beautiful. It followed Dreamfinder and Figment through a musical adventure of arts, literature, entertainment, and music. One Little Spark, the famous Sherman Brothers song, could be heard throughout the ride, and it talked about how just a little bit of inspiration could create an entire world of imagination. In the ride, we could see animatronics of the Dreamfinder and, of course, Figment. Figment was portrayed originally as a young and curious student of the imagination to Dreamfinder. He appeared several times as an animatronic, and each time he was such a cute character. The ride and characters were beloved by Epcot guests all over. But then, Disney decided to re-theme the dark ride to match the film in the pavilion's 3D theater, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. The ride was renamed Journey into Your Imagination. Its track was literally cut in half, reducing the ride time from 12 minutes to 6 minutes. Figment's animatronics disappeared, and he made a single cameo, hidden in a constellation on the ceiling, and the Dreamfinder was completely gone. This ride was awful, it became a cold and quirky tour of the Imagination Institute's sense labs, and it failed to inspire or excite anyone. This version of the ride received so much criticism from the public that it only survived two years before it was replaced. The ride reopened as Journey into Imagination with Figment, and while the Dreamfinder was still nowhere to be found, we thankfully had Figment back, with a more significant role appearing in every single show scene. This new ride takes guests through Dr. Channing's sensory labs, where we can learn about the five senses, sound, sight, smell, touch, and taste. The famous theme tune of the original ride, One Little Spark, is also back. In this ride, Figment is well aware of what imagination is, and is mostly a prankster pulling pranks on Dr. Nigel Channing until he is willing to listen to him and his lesson that imagination works best when set free. Figment has always been such a cute character in everything he has appeared in. He had his own series within the Epcot educational media line titled Language Arts Through Imagination, where he would invite children to his playhouse in an imaginary realm called Fignonia, exploring different reading and writing concepts. I'm Figment! I'm a dragon! Oh god, it's double G! Just use the magic in your mind! I'm Figment! That's me! <laughs>
concepts. He has also appeared in comics and as an Easter egg in movies and at parks. Journey into Imagination with Figment might not be as incredible as Journey into Imagination was, but we're so happy to see Figment come back as an animatronic, and we hope that this character will remain a big part of Imagination Pavilion at Epcot for years and years to come. Thanks for watching. See you next week.